స్వాగతం వెల్కమ్ బ్యాక్ టు ద వీడియో సిరీస్ అండ్ ఇంట్రో టు హైవే ట్రాన్స్పోర్టేషన్ ఇంజనీరింగ్ ఇన్ దిస్ పార్ట్ పార్ట్ టూ సి విల్ టేక్ ఎ క్లోజ్ లుక్ ఎట్ రియాక్షన్ టైమ్ అండ్ ఇట్స్ ఇంపార్టెన్స్ ఇన్ హైవే డిజైన్ ఎట్ ది ఎండ్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ పార్ట్ యూ షుడ్ బి ఏబుల్ టు డిస్క్రైబ్ ఫీవ్ థీరీ అండ్ అవుట్లైన్ ద ఇంపార్టెన్స్ ఆఫ్ రియాక్షన్ టైమ్ ఆఫ్ ద డ్రైవర్ ఇన్ సేఫ్లీ స్టాపింగ్ ద వెహికల్ Drivers react to stimulus on the road which can be expected stimulus or unexpected stimulus. The reaction to both stimuli, expected or unexpected, needs to be considered in design. What is an expected stimulus? Here are some examples. A stop sign or a signal, a road hump, basically everything that is known to exist or visible to the driver. as you can expect something like this is unexpected that's right expecting the unexpected is what we should expect to see what's a driver to do during an unexpected stimulus like that allow me to demonstrate with some crude animation bob is driving his brand new moonroof sedan on a quiet neighborhood street like this somewhere from a playground to his left that's right from left field a ball pops up in his vision and then rolls onto the road what does bob do then he does what any of us would do he stops the car suddenly it's not the ball bob is worried about bob is worried about that a child might come after after the ball and then onto the road this engineer's question would be does bob have adequate time to stop more importantly how much distance bob has in front of him to stop before he hits the ball or god forbid hits the child let's reconstruct this event in a little bit more detail bob came to full stop here and he was here when he first saw the ball in his peripheral vision somewhere here he identified the danger somewhere here marked by this green line he decided to apply brakes and this is where he actually applied the brakes that means he took action this is the only tangible location we can clearly identify in this process if there are any skid marks they should begin at this gray line and now to some definitions the process of seeing the object the orange line is called perception the process of identifying the danger is called intellect seen here in red The point of decision making shown by green line is called emotion and finally the point at which action was taken is called volition point As seen in previous illustration perception identification emotion and volition are four stages of cognition before action by action i mean applying the brakes taking the first letters of these stages these four stages this reaction process is called the pew process or simply pew theory it's hard to recognize the time taken for each of these stages in pew we only consider total time for entire process called pew time simply put pew time is the time taken while reacting to an unexpected stimulus yes our pet peeve of course for unintended Our pet peeve is all about reacting to stimulus which is why peeve time is popularly known as reaction time lower the reaction time safer it will be the reaction time is dependent on the driver as you can imagine but there are millions of them whose reaction time we should use for design in other words who is the design driver In fact in 2009 there are approximately 210 million licensed drivers in USA and they are growing at a compounded annual rate of 1.6%. We can design for each one of them can we? What shall we do? Shall we group them and pick one of the groups? Even if you group them by age group and gender as shown in this chart and pick one of the groups which age group shall we shall be our favorite? even if you pick a favorite we still have tens of millions of drivers and presumably that many reaction times there is a rule of thumb in traffic engineering it strives to cater to the needs of 85% of the population use this thumb rule and pick a design value for reaction time that covers 85% of all drivers in other words there is no single design driver for 
reaction time. Extensive research has shown that 90% of the driving population can react in 2.5 seconds or less. Ashto Green Book recommends therefore the use of 2.5 seconds as the design value for reaction time and all states use the same value in their design guidelines. Let's unclutter the previous illustration and remark the payment. First, this is the available stopping distance for Bob. These lines delineate important events during vehicle stop and here we have the reaction time and the distance traveled during the reaction time is called reaction distance. Keep in mind, during the reaction time, the vehicle is still going at the same initial velocity V and as the brakes are applied, vehicle starts decelerating and the distance traveled from time brakes are applied to the time of coming to full stop is called stopping distance. Here's a very important note. These definitions are very strict definitions and there is no room for error. As you would expect, Reaction distance is dependent on reaction time and initial speed of the vehicle. That's fairly simple. And the stopping distance would be dependent on a host of variables, but primarily on initial speed, deceleration rate, which is again dependent on driver and the vehicle, roadway grade and road friction. Now to computing reaction distance D sub R. If the initial speed is V and reaction time is T sub R, distance traveled in reaction time or reaction distance is velocity times time or dr equals V times T, T sub R. If V is in miles per hour and TR is in seconds, we can convert that into feet per second using this formula. So you, it's very simple, 5,280 feet per mile and 3,600 seconds per hour. If you're doing this conversion, you'll have dr equals 1.47 v times tr. Remember, in this last equation, v is in miles per hour and t sub r is in seconds. It's a all too common equation. It will show up in a variety of places and you might as well remember or memorize this forever. That's such a simple formula we can compute reaction distance for any given speed and I put that in an Excel spreadsheet and then put it in this chart which shows the reaction distance needed for a given reaction time at various speeds. Obviously higher the speed higher the reaction distance. 2.5 seconds is the green book design value for reaction time for this time, you can visually compare the reaction distances at various speeds. For each 10 mile increment in speed, we need approximately an additional 37 feet for reaction distance alone. Here are some discussion points with respect to reaction time. All too important reaction time. We all know intuitively or otherwise, people need more time to react when they are under the influence. But as long as the reaction time stays below the design value of 2.5 seconds, the driver is expected to stop in time. By the way, if you are, if you are ticketed for driving under the influence, don't try to be a smarty fan and try this defense, okay? It won't work. Fatigue is, also has profound effect on reaction time. Typically, older people require higher reaction times. Conversely, Younger people have lower reaction times, but that doesn't necessarily make younger people safer drivers. Just ask the insurance companies. Don't bother. As a parent with two of my kids having been on my car insurance policy, I can tell you that that's true. That's what insurance companies will tell you. What about inclement weather? Does it affect reaction time? It sure does. It affects sleep. How? The first requirement for reaction is vision, remember? More often than not, inclement weather affects visibility and therefore it affects the reaction times of entire population. What about distracted driving? This is the baby boomers problem and this is the millennials problem. Again, one needs to see before acting and therefore distracted driving increases reaction time. Clearly, lower the reaction time, safer will be the driving world. 
you will agree to that part. What can we as engineers do to improve reaction times? By improve, I mean reduce reaction times. First, determine safe operating speed for conditions. In most cases, speed is what we have in our control and nothing else sometimes. Safer operating speed is what you see as the speed limit. It is not the same as design speed. What you see as the speed limit is not the design speed. And then design f proper signage and signal control and communicate that to the driver. For this part, we will leave it there. Let us summarize this part. Reaction time. It's the time between spotting a stimulus and the time brakes are applied. It is very critical in design. There is no design driver. Design reaction time is 2.5 seconds and it covers 90% of the driver population. Various factors increase reaction times. And that concludes part 2C. Thanks for watching.